Hallelujah, Father Yah and everybody. I have some words to share. What we seen last night, so-called debate that's going on, and the terrible, terrible thing that you could have two candidates running for the leadership of our two hours live, and not one of them, not one time, mentioned a wonderful creator. Not one of them at one time quoted not one verse from scripture. Not one time did anyone discuss the return of Yeshua. And then when they spoke about terrible murder, murder through abortion, not one time did anyone mention the innocent children? It just shows us where the focus is. And if this is the leadership, or so-called leadership of our country, where are they leading us to and where are they leading us from? It shows us the direction we're heading in. It shows us the disregard for, for scripture, and disregard for our creator in this, in this world. And I believe every candidate had an opportunity to win this so-called debate if they would have just brought up the fact that Yeshua is real and he's coming back. And we must get in line with the principles of Yah. Some people wanted to hear the agenda of one candidate. Some people wanted to hear the agenda of another candidate. But it seemed nobody was interested in the agenda of our Creator. It seemed nobody was interested in the policy that our Creator wants for us. His will for us was just found in the Torah and carried out all throughout the Scripture by the Prophets. The place where this is leading is, is not a good thing because there can be no winner, there can be no solution without Yah's instructions and guidelines because his word says, I offer you a future and a hope. And isn't that what the, the picking the new leader is supposed to be about? A future and a hope? What is just doom and gloom because like the scripture says, there's a way before each person that seems right. We could say there's a way before each candidate that seems right. But the rest of the scripture says, but ends in death. And whether they're talking about wars around the world or murder of children or any policy on any particular topic, if you leave Yeshua out of the mix, if you leave Yah's word out of your solution, you have already lost. And by saying you, we as people that are voting are part of you. And I believe we should vote for Yeshua. That's who our vote should go to and his ways, and the candidate that's going to, to live up to those instructions and guidelines of Torah is the one we should consider to have there. And it's certainly not from what we've seen last night in this so-called debate, either one of those, without mentioning in two hours to not mention that. Every conversation we have with somebody, we should somehow, some way, forgo the example of Yeshua, mentioning something about scripture and finding a way to either remind people that know and through encouragement or introducing to people that don't know and don't believe with boldness who Yeshua is, what he did, and this is the only way to safety, to health, to joy, to peace. And to have a public stage of most of the eyes of the country you live in and to not mention any of that within two hours is shameful and revealing of where these candidates are, where this country is heading, and where this world is heading. Show me a world leader. And I use the word leader very loosely. Show me a world leader that is 
using scripture to create their policies. Show me a world leader that's mentioning Yeshua and these terrible moderators. I mean, how do you start a debate, one of the most important debates in the history of the world, when every eye is there without praying? Without praying. And the candidates had a wonderful opportunity to say before I speak, before we have this this forum, I'm going to say a prayer. The Yah's will will be done. And amongst all the differences that we can come together and find a solution where peace will prevail. No prayers for the terrible situations going on around the world and the people suffering. Just boasting about how they met with the victims. It's not, it's not a good thing, folks. And we need to consider these things. When in these campaigns, or how much in these campaigns have we heard scripture? Have we seen examples? When and where are they? And what are we to do as so-called believers? And what are Christians supposed to do when these people are making up policies without using principles from scripture? And then we have another so-called candidate who's not there, who has a great understanding of the terrible affliction that people are under through the you know, poor food and disease-ridden habits of the world, but still no scripture, no scripture. And uh, I mean, did, did, did they ever in the past start prayer, these things with prayer? I don't know, because I certainly didn't see it last night or anyone say anything last night about prayer. And even afterwards, and even before, no one said, I'm praying about what to say, or I'm praying about the turnout, or I'm praying about the, the solution, what I should do, what people should do. How do you leave out greatest story ever told in the history of man and Yeshua from such an important conversation or topic. And when you look at history, the history, how do you leave out the story of, of scripture that shows what happens? It's, it's very sad. But it, it's very revealing. That's that's what I have to say. So may we as believers pray for our so-called leadership to come and and start to really take Yah's word seriously. And if they're going to take his word seriously, they'll have no issue letting people know that they need to take it seriously. I mean, in the closing statements, besides opening and prayer, why not say in the cl closing statements, may we all pray to Yah right now, you know, that, that, that this, the wars in the world and everything would end and ask Yah to reveal to us what we need to do. How about taking an example from Jonah and going to a world of wickedness and saying, on this stage, you know, I suggest for everyone that's not medically unable to do it, I call for one day of prayer in this nation, in this whole nation, for one day of prayer. One whole day, not this 24-hour stuff. One whole day, 36 hours. No food for one day, just water for prayer and fasting. 
Yah's will will be done. How amazing would that have been in a closing statement? I mean, you want to win a vote of a Christian? I guarantee that would have sealed the deal. And then to go and do it and leave that. And I would just pray and continue to pray that one of these candidates and the people so-called supporting them would, would wake up and realize nothing will, will be more successful than acknowledging Yah and his word. And the passion for people on both sides of this. And it is an important topic. So we should have passion. But where's the passion for Yeshua? Where's the passion for scripture? Where's the passion for Yah? You know, people need to shift their focus. You know, I mean, they could have called for us to pray about everything that was said and, and to just take this as a day of prayer. Today, you have these so-called days of prayer from the, that are scheduled from the so-called government. Day of repentance. Nobody's praying or repenting on these days. I don't see the leadership calling for a fast or I see them doing things that go against Yah. So my political stance would be Yeshua first and what he wants and that our policies be on him. And we speak about the innocent children when a topic of abortion comes up. Before we speak about the so-called tragedies that things happen to people and exceptions and all this stuff. We think about the innocent child that can't speak for himself or herself. You know, the greatest political, scriptural, biblical plan for us to live our lives that offers us a future and hope is laid in scripture. From every topic, We just have lying and name calling and deception. Let me ask you, who does that sound like it's from? Not from y'all. Who does it sound like it's from? Lying and name calling and deception and anger and, and all this. Who does that sound like it's from? The shame that they had this platform and I didn't mention Yeshua. Once, not once. So may, may there be great repentance. And all the people that are speaking about the debate, I don't hear anyone saying what I'm saying right now. They're declaring the winner and the loser. They're both losers because nobody mentioned Yeshua. And this is a uh, and I don't care if you're watching and you don't believe in Yeshua. You don't believe in scripture. I don't care if you're an atheist watching, a Muslim watching, whoever you're watching right now. Well, I'm speaking truth right now. And you want peace, you want shalom, you want truth, you want justice to prevail. You live according to scripture, justice will prevail. Live according to scripture and justice will prevail. Forget about the debate for a second and show me one commentary from the debate last night, today, because it hasn't been out there yet. Everyone calling their winners and losers, show me one commentary saying, well, they should have mentioned Yeshua, or they should have mentioned scripture, or too bad they didn't do this, or too bad they didn't say anything about that. Not one. So you're all ashamed of, and you all need to repent. You need to repent. And in the side chats, I don't see anyone saying this. In all the side chats of the during the live debate, nobody said this. You know, when people put on a steam this debate and this 
these candidates more than they are scripture. This is the problem we have. I know people that will post every single day about this race, but they'll never once post about scripture. Never one post about the history of what has happened and what's to come. And uh, yeah, we didn't make any exceptions here. We watched, we observed, and then you know what we did? We did what we always do. We read our scriptures read our scriptures. And today, last thing I'm going to say is before I let you go today, everybody, is today is a day called 9-11. And I was in New York for, for 9-11 when stuff went down. And again, how much are we going to have anger and revenge on our mind? Or how much are we going to put Yah's word on our mind and the word never forget, never forget. Well, when we say never forget, we should attach that to the crucifixion of Yeshua. That's what we should attach it to. Never forget. And I pray for all the families that were affected by 9-11 people in it. But I never forget what Yeshua did for us and what Yeshua promises us. Stay strong, brothers and sisters. Have a blessed day, everybody. Y'all be with you all, and shalom, shalom. If you'd like some more videos about Bible topics, please subscribe to this page and check out the other videos I've posted. We also do live prayer every morning, and we have live fellowship every Friday evening. Thank you.